Hey guys, Cam here from the fish room, and today we're doing an update from inside my fish room. Alright, so as we can see, where all systems go in here, um, I still haven't got round to fixing. Uh, this bad boy here, I have actually seen, I believe it's still leaking because the ply underneath is still quite saturated, so um, I think my original thought of it here, finished leaking was wrong, and I know you're going to say, well your line's there and your water level's there, yeah it is, but I've also been taking water out of this to top up the other aquarium, so I'm going to drain it at some point, it was on my jobs to do today, drain it and reseal it, but I realized that I need to do a stock take, so that's going to take up most of my time once I've done this video. So the planted aquarium uh, for sales plants, still not there unfortunately. But if we come along here, we've got some uh, Bosmani rainbow fish in here and a couple of guppies. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, there is a few uh, various plecos in here, mainly bristle nose. And we might not be able to see them, but there is a good troop of Corydora. Uh, they're probably all tucked away. Oh, we've got one under there. Just, maybe. Um, so there's about seven or eight big adults and about a dozen small, small fry. Um, so they've come from three different sources. So I've got a group of salt and pepper Corydora in there, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, moving through to here, I've put my gold Anubius Nana in there. It's also on, obviously on a piece of wood, so it's given a little hiding spot for the golden bristle nose. Crip growing up the back, Crip growing up the front, that's an Aphinus there. And Anchinodorus there, that's my Homani, which looked like it was going really well. All of a sudden it decided to melt back a little bit. Uh, Red Tiger Lotus, which I'm really struggling to keep in the substrate because there's a couple of dwarf chain loaches that keep pulling it up. And I've got some Sunset Polysperma. I bought that yesterday. I know it's all... Oh, yesterday, the day before. I know it's a weedy, but I'm going to start trimming it back. And that is going to be the first implant that goes into my little nano display tank. So I've got that. So that there, I'm going to bush out. Maybe get 20 odd stems from it. And then move on from there. So that's those two. And then we move to the next two. It's a completely stark contrast. So it's covered in algae, it's covered in hair algae, uh, it's mucky and it's gross, but that's alright. So the crinum is covered in this hair algae. I've just put the wave maker in there to try and push it a little bit around, it's probably a bit late for that now. My Nana Petite is covered in it as well, in fact everything in here is just covered in it. And then if we move along to here, this is pretty much the same, just covered in it. Um, so yesterday I wiped down one edge So you can see the contrasting difference between the clear aquarium and the mucky gross one So I'm uncertain as to why We've got This end covered in algae in this end not so much um, The lights are identical. They were bought at the same time. They've got the exact same amount of running time on them um, because it's been on timers up until recently. I come in here, I turn them on, I come in here, I turn them off at the same time, so I don't think it'll be the lighting, although that could be an obvious thought, because clearly that one covers that one, and that one covers that one. Generally speaking, these front two here are getting more flow and, than what these ones are, which means there's more nutrients going through that, so that's another possibility. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit interesting how it's really hit this one, but not so much these two. Um, I personally think it is a combination of a little bit too much light in general, probably a bit too much nutrients, and the system itself being quite uh, quite young and immature. Uh, so I'm going to work on the theory of doing plenty of water changes, adding plenty of bottled bacteria. At the moment I'm using the TLC for freshwater aquariums. Um, I've used it before and I quite like it, so I'm going to give it a go. And hoping that increasing the bacteria load within the filter will then uh, mature the system a lot quicker and then hopefully the matured system will combat the algae because I've had the diatoms which is the brown algae and this is just basically the next step in it 
but obviously I'm concerned that the Crinum and uh, particularly the Anubius Nana Petite, but some of the other plants might get hammered really hard with that algae. So that's the battle that I'm going through at the moment. And then if we move into the little Nano, not much is going on in here. Just that dwarf sedge, I've got a couple of stems to go into it once I've grown it out a bit. I need to increase the lighting in here for this tank because I don't think it's going to be good enough. Uh, but for the time being, it's fine for the little dwarf sedge and the black neons. So that's what's going on in these main part of the aquariums. And then we're moving on to this fella, which is cycling quite nicely. I was, well, I am planning on using this for a Tanganyika uh, nature or natural aquarium. I don't want to say biotope because we are so limited with the fish that we can get here. Uh, it's not going to be able to be done as a biotope. So I'm a little bit annoyed at this uh, filter. It's really noisy. You probably can't hear it, but it's frustrating me. So I'm considering swapping over to a hang on back uh, filter. A couple of reasons behind that. Uh, the first one is uh, for ease of cleaning. Hand up here, take all the cartridges out and away you go. Uh, second one is because it is actually quite high on the stand. I'm actually uncertain if a canister filter will be able to get the head height. I'll, I'll rephrase that. I'll be able to get a canister filter that will get the head height but I'll need a really really big one and it'll probably end up being overkill and then the price point on that for the size aquarium might not make it worth while. So I'm thinking a hang on back is probably going to be the best bet for this aquarium. Um, as you can see I've got bumblebees in here. For the life of me I don't know where the bumblebees have come from. There is at least four bumblebees in this tank alone. There has been bumblebees in here, there have been bumblebees in here, there's been bumblebees in there. There's bumblebees everywhere. I know bumblebees are attracted to blue and all the back of the aquariums are blue. The walls of my fish room are blue but I don't know how they've actually managed to get in here because the windows are always shut unless I'm in here and the doors are always shut unless I'm in here as well. So I don't know where the bumblebees have come from but I got bees. So unfortunately another issue has popped up here in this uh, Tanganyika tank I was going to do just this morning I have noticed that it is leaking so I'll show you that. I think I know where it's coming from. I said that with the planted tank as well and I was clearly wrong but I think I know where this one's coming from so it should be a bit of an easy fix. Let's have a wee look at that. So we've got a leak and it's coming through and around here and out here. The interesting thing is that lines up to about where the overflow is. So I think what's happened is the overflow itself isn't quite tight enough or maybe the top piece just needs a slight um, tightening on the thread or something like that to stop it coming down and then leaking. I don't think it's actually leaking from a seal. I think it's leaking from that. So um, that there is something I need to fix before I even go any further with that because obviously I want it not leaking before um, I put fish into it. And last but not least, we have our racks here. Uh, about three weeks ago, I was told that the house that I am living in is being sold. Uh, so I do not feel there's much point in me setting this up. And before you go, why are you setting this up if you're just renting a house, blah, blah, blah. I've been living in this house for 10 years and it was kind of out of the blue. Uh, they're not selling it for about another year. But we need to move and I think it's going to be a lot harder for me to have this all set up and then to find a house to live in as opposed to having everything dry and then I can just move it, don't have to worry about any livestock or anything like that. So for the time being, for the next little while we won't be carrying any livestock unless I get some of the fish that I've got in that rack to spawn. And if I do get those fish in that rack to spawn then I'll grow them out and I'll just sell them in sort of quantities of 10 or something like that as opposed to um, carrying livestock for the time being. It's pretty disappointing because that was obviously what I was gearing up to do but one door closes another door opens so you never know what's going to happen from there onwards. Um, but unfortunately that means that the livestock is not going to be in here, uh, at least not for sale and that means that these racks are just going to sit in, or tanks are going to sit in here dry and the five or six tanks that I've got going along that wall is basically all that I'm going to have. Another disappointing thing for me obviously is that's a whole wall that I could be putting dry goods on to sell on our website which is obviously www.fishroom.co.nz just to 
cheeky wee plug there. Um, so that's disappointing. I could set up another rack and, and have some more stock in there, but hey, it is what it is. And then, as always, we have plenty of dry goods to move on. Plenty of food, plenty of water chemistry stuff, plant equipment, stuff to deal with nitrates and ammonias, air pumps, breeding equipment, pond gear, siphons, uh, you name it, it's pretty much here other than canister filters and light setups. The only reason behind that is we offer free shipping on the website and um, if I'm sending canister filters and lights and stuff like that, the shipping cost just makes it not worth having it when we're doing it for free. So it's purely on a business point. Um, but yeah, so I've got all the stuff to go. Awesome. So there we have it, an update from my fish room, albeit quite short. Maybe not that exciting because there's only a few extra things in here, being the Corydora, the extra plant. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it as far as wet stuff goes. I am heading down to Christchurch in a couple of weeks and I am going to be checking out a couple of shops. So there'll be a couple of videos coming up for that as well as hopefully, my fingers crossed, I'm going to pick up some new fish for myself. Alright guys, if you like the video please share it, like it, got any questions bang them in down below, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel if you like what we are doing. Other than that, have a good one, happy fish Kevin, and catch you later.